how's everyone tonight? It is my challenge, <laughs> challenge to get up and say something really nice about the person to my right. Uh, and I would start with this. She talks all the time. Uh, she talks when you don't want her to talk. She keeps talking anyway. And sometimes she really has some interesting stuff to say. It's rare, but sometimes she does. <laughs> But tonight, um, she has a presentation for us all, information that will help each of us, and we need to pay attention to what she has to say. It is uh, for the good of mankind that she will speak tonight. <laughs> I introduce to you, to some, and present to others, my sister, my older sister, I might add, Ruth Mitch. <laughs> Thank you, Miss <Ms>. Smith. <laughs> I couldn't find my sign until I got here. But you see what this sign says? I'm a crook. Now, I know it says on the agenda uh, and the little paper that I had, what's it, how to, what did it say, y'all? How to think like a crook. Okay. But if I, you were to see somebody walking down the street with this on, you right away, you would go the other way, right? But that lets us know, and I'm here to tell you tonight, that crooks are no different from anybody else. They look just like everybody else. Even if they put on dark glasses. I mean, how many folks wear dark glasses? Matter of fact, I got some myself. I put on one, I think I want to be cool. And then you said that those guys with all those tattoos, every kid in school's got tattoos. And some of us has got some. Of course, I'm not going to show you mine. <laughs> so in other words, I'm saying it's not always easy to spot a con artist. They are smart, extremely persuasive, and they are aggressive. They invade your home through the telephone. You know, they call and say you just won. And one thing I keep talking about, I got this email, and it says my long-lost relative over somewhere in Africa has got five million. For me, I was so excited when I got that email. But then they kind of burst my bubble. And they said they wanted me to send, put $4,500 in my account, give them the account number, and then they're going to send me my money. Well, I'm, uh, you know, not the smartest person in the world. No rocket scientist or anything like that. But I got to thinking, I've got $5 million. They got it in their hands. And they want my little $4,500. Wouldn't it make sense? for them to take my 4500 out and send me the rest if they wanted me to have it. See, that says we need to stop and think about these things that people is telling us. And the other thing, the crooks of the con artists invade through our computer. Now, I don't know a whole lot about computers, but they say, you know, you not to go on this link and not to go on that link, because the first thing you know, you over there somewhere you ain't got no business to be. But I do know there is a link, uh, and it's MSN. You want to know somebody's address, you go to MSN. Well, you know, I get a little impatient sometimes, and I was just mashing keys, and the next thing I know, there are all these men in poses that I've never seen before. So I called the girl and I said, there's something wrong with my computer. All I wanted was an address, and look at these men I got. She said, you didn't do MSN, you did M-E-N. Okay. These crooks invade us through the mail. Oftentimes we get these letters and they say all these things we've won and uh, uh, even to order stuff. You know, they tell you just give them your credit card and they're gonna send you all of this stuff. I got home from work one day and my dad was sitting there being. He just jingling these two keys. He had won a red Cadillac and a white one. He was trying to decide which one that he wanted. And I said, Daddy, what do you mean you want to decide which car you want? He said, this thing coming to mail. All they want is a blank check. <laughs> uh, and even if we look in some of our newspapers, there are all of this stuff that we can get for little or nothing. Don't mess with it because it's going to get you in big trouble. And another thing about con artists, they are well-mannered, friendly, helpful. They will even tell you what you need to do. So you don't have to give them the whole thing. Just give them numbers. And you know, they call you and they said, uh, uh, this is uh, Jump Over the Moon Bank. 
And you said, you want to move back? Yes. Uh, you do have an account here. And what my seniors will do, I said, oh, no. I don't have an account with Jump Over the Moon. Mine is at Black Dog Express. What have I just done? You told them where your account is. And you said, oh, that is right. I just forgot it. Said, but your number is 543. No, it's not. My number is 123. And I'm telling my seniors, think about the information that you're giving. Why would the credit union or why would the bank call you to verify your number? Don't they have the whole record? If they can't keep up with it in their building, you need to go somewhere else. Like to Marshall to Pine Credit Union. Okay. But <laughs> most people think they are too smart to fall for a scam. But con artists rob all kinds of people, from investment counselors to doctors to teenagers, uh, senior citizens, the whole gamut. And in North Carolina, the Attorney General's office and AARP is partnering because they recognize that there are so many scams going on and so many of our citizens are being scammed till they have come up with what they call fraud fighters. And there are volunteers who are being trained on how to spot a crew and on some things that you need to do or not do to keep from being scammed. One of the things you can ne should never do is give a caller your credit card number. If the credit card company is calling you, why do they need you to give them the number? Think about it. Some plain old common sense stuff. <clears throat> and if somebody is giving you a prize or a gift, why do you have to pay for it? Why do you have to send them stuff? Think about it. Uh, 900 numbers. Now, if you like watching those pictures like I saw when I went to that wrong website, <laughs> then sometimes it's a good idea to call these 900 numbers. But as for me, I don't want to see no picture. I want to see the real thing. <laughs> okay, and, and another thing, you need to take your time and shop around. When these aggressive con people call and say, you got to do this and got to do that, tell them, oh, no, you wait a minute. Another one, one of my seniors said, she come that day, and she was just really all been out of shape. Said, this guy rolled up on this pickup truck and jumped out, got his ladder up on the roof. He went, and she said, hey, sir, what are you doing? What are you doing? He come back down, he's out of breath. He said, ma'am, I hate to tell you this. You see this? Piece of shit. I don't know why you haven't drowned, but just be glad. What's the matter for? Oh, child, it's supposed to rain tomorrow. You better let me go up there quick and put a roof on your house, because the way that shingles is falling off, you could drown if it rains. The little lady said she was worried to death, because she said, Lord, I got my mama's antique stuff, and I really don't want it to get wet. See, he keeps preying on her emotions. He got her so upset, she said, if she knew anything, she'd give a man $200. I said, what were you thinking? She said, I didn't want to drown. <laughs> <laughs> and another thing, they come in and want to paint your house, and they'll paint it for little or nothing. All you got to do is go to Walmart, go to Lowe's, and look and see what paint costs. And you know how big your garage or your house is? And if they're going to paint the whole thing for $200 in two hours, does that make sense? And then this little lady, she, they come along, they want to pave her driveway. She said, I've always wanted to pave driveway. The man said, no sweat, ma'am. I can take care of it in just a few minutes. Said it won't long when he was out there just a whistling and sp spreading that cement. Good thing. Because in two or three days, it rained, and the rest of it washed on down the hill. <laughs> but we need to remember that we have the right, the ability, and the power to use one word to stop a whole lot of that. It's a great big word. Starts with an N and ends with O. And that word is? No. no. So, if, you know, and we get these little funny feelings when we get a call and you know something exactly right. Listen to your instincts. And say, wait a minute. And you don't have to talk. That is your phone. You're paying the bill, right? Why do you stand there and let them convince you to give them your money? What did you do? Hang it up? Hang your phone up. You're the one that's paying for it, right? Sometimes by simply doing that, you can prevent a crime from taking place. Be a wise consumer. Don't buy <laughs> health products and treatments that include a promise for a quick and dramatic cure. Your back hurting it? Well, it's been hurting for two or three days. Well, I got some QB juice. You drink one cup of it and you'll be kicking high, just like a new majorette. Seven and one years old, only way you go kick high is you got a cream lifting that leg up. It ain't gonna happen on your own. And then these testimonials. You know, I did at, on TV. I, I have to say, they had one of those exercise things for you, the little cute little girls. I bought me one of those slim suits. 
I had the wrist break band, he had the sweat band. I fell up in there. I was ready to do some exercise. Them little things made about 90 pounds. They jumped right around. I did about three jumps. <laughs> Out of breath. That cute little suit didn't mean nothing. I got to thinking, why am I trying to do something I shouldn't? Just because somebody else do it, why do I have to try to do it? This is me. I know what I can do and what I cannot do. These offers that come in the mail, look at me. <laughs> My uh, husband, before he traded me in for a new model, um, ordered me a suit from somebody. And he was talking about what a wonderful suit. It was about five pieces. And I think he said he got it for $19.95. <laughs> well, I, 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 there wasn't as much of me then as there is now. But being the loving wife that I was at that time, I thought the only thing to do is put this suit on. Well, I got two sons, and it took both of us to try to get me in that suit. <laughs> and when I, I finally got in it, you know, and I was afraid to move because I was afraid the thing was going to burst. And he said, honey, how do you like it? Well, I was so tired from straining to finally get it on, and I said, honey, I think you've been had. Because if I go anywhere with this suit on, we'd have to run a truck because I'd have to stand up. Ain't no way I could sit down with that thing on. But he thought he was doing something by his honey. He liked to kill his honey with that suit. Uh, so beware of cheap stuff. A lot of times that's exactly what it is, some cheap stuff. And then they will, people will come to your house and they will ask you, say, uh, Aren't you, uh, does that rat stay in the hall right next door? And if he's not thinking, he'll say, no, that's not rat. That's where Peggy stays. Aha, uh -huh. he's giving on the first thing. Well, is her husband home? No, she's divorced. Two things he should not have told her. Right. But we do think we're being helpful, because a man said, well, you know, I'm selling uh, land in uh, Alaska, $20 an acre, and I thought she wanted to get in on it. But he has basically given him in the information. And they also caution you when you think you're like a crook, to not think like a crook, and they suggest that you not go the same way to your house all the time. Don't set up routines. People is watching. Uh, Barbara's neighbor was telling us the other day about how his van kept noticing coming by really, really slow. And they checking the place out to see who's there and who isn't. What kind of cars is there? Who's getting out of the car? Is it a woman staying by herself? And they also suggest that you have timers and have lights at your house come on at different times. So even if you aren't there, you might have a light come on in the den. You might have a light come on in the kitchen. So that it'll look like uh, somebody is at home. And don't always pull your car in the same way. You may want to back it in sometime. And you may, like I said, want to come in. Go by Walmart before you come home sometime. Uh, <clears throat> well, and I talked about one about the car, about the new cars. If they call and tell you you got something that uh, the deal sounds too good to be true, that uh, it's probably too good uh, to be true. And if you happen to be one of the unfortunate ones that uh, really get got, put your shame out of the game and report that, because you may be helping uh, somebody else. And like I said, I deal with the seniors all the time, and I'm constantly telling them to be on the lookout, to be aware of where you are. And I'm telling you, when you go to these uh, car garages, you know how you go around around to the garage? And a lot of time when you go in there, you have to keep going up and up to finally find a parking place. And you may, like I am, I like to do a lot of looking in the mall and get ready to go, and then nobody looks at but you. One of them little car sitting off over there. If you are not comfortable going to your car, you go right down to that parking attendant, and you tell him, my car's up there, and I'm scared. And if he don't want to do anything, you let your fingers do the walking as you call 911, and tell him that you are afraid to go over there by yourself. Could be a crook over there, because I watch Colombo all the time. And <laughs> the crooks is out there. Okay. And there is a, uh, um, a national uh, uh, fraud information center, so 800 number that you can call. And I've got some information here. Oh, and another one. I forgot my little thing. Couldn't find until I got here. That if you see somebody walking around that I'm going to take your money, you scam or scramble the other way, right? But that's what we do oftentimes. We give it up. And then they say afterwards, do you know what happened to me? They took my money. They didn't take it. We give it to them because we aren't thinking. We aren't on our toes. And anybody that's gonna do it with us. Now we got the, uh, Kevin, if something happens and somebody's account is compromised, he's right on the ball to get the thing taken care of. But some of that stuff is so ridiculous, he shouldn't have to do that. We should not do these dumb things. But until we learn that it is in our court, 
that we are the ones that's responsible, we are acting just like a crook. Thank you. Hey, Chris, um, Craigslist is the same thing. Um, I have seen a lot of people getting checks from Craigslist when they sell something on Craigslist. The checks are no good. They'll send them a regular mail, then they'll send it FedEx two or three days later. I had a friend of mine that was going to deposit it in his account. I said, well, we're going to freeze your whole account if you do that. Mm -hmm. I said, the best thing you can do is get all your emails and take them to the police department and hand it over to them. And there is, you know, all of that, uh, um, those uh, credit card offers that come in the mail, mm -hmm. they suggest that you shred those because if somebody come along and pick get those and fill it out, change the address, they can get your money. And, and again, I said, you know, it can't happen to me, but uh, an investment banker in uh, Raleigh lived in a cul-de-sac, and they said one of the little crook, crooks came in there and went to every one of those mailboxes and got every one of those uh, free credit card things and sent them in. All you got to do is change the address. Yeah. But anyway, check your credit report, and I've got, there's three credit agencies, and I've got copies in case you want to check that, and they are free, and so you could check it maybe once a quarter to make sure that there's no uh, charges on your credit report that you did not know about. Uh, your statements every month. You got an account in Belt, and a couple of months you don't get a statement, something's wrong, you need to check into it. Now, if you pay the bill, oh, that's one thing, but any statements that you're accustomed to getting, you need to check and make sure that you get it. We need to be, be on our toes, because the crooks is working overtime. Ruth, um, mail in the mailbox. I had a friend of mine wrote a $1,600 check to discover last week. He knows when the mail runs, and they were in town. They live in Chatham. And when they came back, the mailbox was open. There was no mail in there. She knew the mailman hadn't ran. So be very careful when you put that mail in that mailbox at home. They advise you not they even use them. You know, you, you are not there and you can't see the mailbox or something like do. Well, I don't have that problem. Uh, the people on my road that take care of that for me, they don't want me to have a mailbox. Every time we get one put up, they come along and tear it all to pieces. Okay. But anyway, security freeze and your yearly credit report, I've got this information uh, if anybody wants it, okay? Y'all got any questions? Any comments? You did a good job. Good job. Yes, yes. I, I'd add one thing about it. It happened, it's a big scam we had in 2010 where it, 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 happened, it happened anyway. But you get the phone call, say your car's activated, your account's been closed, you need to call this, and they'll leave a number. Well, someone will call us just to see what happens. Well, what happens is you hear nothing, but on the other end, they just do a reverse call on your phone number where it came from, and they got everything about you, that's all they need. So don't even respond to the phone calls. Just, just hang up like you said. You and can even be eight... You can be compromised that way too, by the mm -hmm. devil on the other end. Right. Get and your phone number off the call. Call it, back. Uh, going into a, a, a bank or a credit union, and you see those lines, and they, but you stand back for a certain distance, they didn't just put those up there just to have some decoration. Huh? That is, because with these cell phones, you are careful. They can take a picture of account number while you're standing right there. So when you go up to that counter to do your business, if anybody's standing too close, excuse me, you have the a power to ask them to get back, Jack. Because okay? it can happen. Yes, me. Also, uh, I got a smartphone and I'm getting text messages like 3 in the morning. Don't know where they're coming from, don't know who they are. So don't respond to those. Those are. Uh, that's becoming a big problem. It's, uh, it's uh, starting to rise now because okay, uh, yeah. there's a security flaw on all these smartphones that these crooks know about. Mm -hmm. You respond to it, they're going to have everything about you on that smartphone and anything they need. So if you're not familiar with the who's texting you, don't even touch it. Just erase it. And this is that other thing we put all these pictures and stuff. Like I said, I'm not a cute. Facebook. Uh, Facebook. Facebook. You know people putting on the Facebook, hit a little child standing in front of the house with the house number. And then they get on Facebook and say, going on vacation, we going to be in Nassau all week. <laughs> what have you done? Come on over. The house is set now. <laughs> yeah. So, one of those at work, her niece, when she was going for Christmas, mm -hmm. That's right. And then my aunt got a phone call. This is her granddaughter. She needed to have money to get out of jail. 
she hadn't done anything. Uh, actually, one in the bank four different times. But the bank manager recognized something was wrong, and he asked her. So she did not lose the money. Didn't send any money. Mm -hmm. But that's what happens. They'll go in, and the person will be so upset, and they'll just like get the money out. Why? And another one, um, and this happened to the lady at the local up. She said, look, old lady, and she had one of those uh, screened-in porches, one of those old hooks. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Anyway, so this man came, and she said, she looked at him. He seemed to be in covered with blood. He was out of breath. He said, it just had a wreck, and his wife was expecting a baby, and she got in the car, and I need to use your phone. And she said, without thinking, she hit that lock, and it went up. And these other two men, she said, I don't know where they came from. They pushed right on in that house, knocked her down. And she said they were ramshacking and calling her some very unladylike names. Where's the money? Where's the money? But she said when they knocked over the corner, she just laid over there and closed her eyes and started praying out loud, and they finally left her alone. So here's what I tell my seniors. When somebody comes to your door, they dripping with blood. They have not dripped out getting from the car to your door. Let them drip on until 911 get out. <laughs> Sounds cruel, but that is the truth. Don't let them in your house, because you don't know who else is lurking around the bush there somewhere. Okay. Uh, anything else? Uh, <laughs>